Today is uh, April the 26th, the Tuesday, it's 8.52 at night, and down in the lower level. And I thought that I would show the books, the used books I bought recently. Uh, today I picked up at thrift store uh, Dangerous Laughter, 13 Stories by Steve, Stephen Milhauser. The reason why I was thinking, I, I got this book because recently I bought, I got used Stephen Milhauser's uh, novel, Martin Dressler, The Tale of an American Dreamer that won the Pulitzer Prize. And so when I saw this today at a thrift store it's by Stephen Malhauser, Dangerous Laughter, 13 Stories, 10 Best Books, New York Times Book Review, 2006, New York Times Notable Book. So I got that. And this is by a South African writer. S several years ago I used to read a lot of her novels. Her name is Nataline Gordon. Gordon Dimer. This is July's People. Several years ago, I read a lot of her novels. And she writes about South Africa and apartheid, and so I got that today. And I found this novel called *The Three West Men*, *West Westmans of Westport*, a novel by Kathleen Shined. This was also uh, a New York Times book review, Editor's Choice. Uh, it says here, Betty Weissman has just been d dumped by her husband of 48 years, exiled from her elegant New York apartment by her husband's mistress. She and her two middle-aged daughters, Miranda and Annie, regroup in a rundown Westport, Connecticut beach cottage and shines, shines playful and devoted homage to Jane Austen's sense and sensibility. The impulsive sister is Miranda, a literary agent entangled in a series of scandals. And the more pragmatic sister is Annie, a library director who feels compelled to move in and, in and watch over her capricious mother and sister. Shine's witty and wonderful novel is simply full of pleasure, the pleasure of reading, the pleasure of Austin, the pleasure that characters so rightly, humorously pursue an absolute triumph, quoting the central, the Cleveland Plain Dealer. So it looked pretty interesting. It was a notable book, New York Times book review. I tend to buy, if I see a New York Times book review, notable book of the year, I tend to buy them. And I found this coming of age story called Pig by Andrew Cowan. Uh, when his grandfather dies and his grandfather is sent to a rest home, 15 year old Danny decides to maintain life in their tiny cottage as though nothing has changed. An ancient pig provides companionship, but then Danny falls in love with surrender sur surrender a young indian neighbor and suddenly both are faced with un unanticipated dangers as racial tension in their gritty town rears its head i suppose the girl is from india this is a british uh, the writer here says andrew colin was born in scotland he has worked as a printer oil historian janitor and librarian this is his first novel so yeah, so the young Danny falls in love with this girl from India. Racial tension in the gritty town rears its head. A dreamy, elegantly written novel, Pig reveals the feelings of sexual awakening, the need for love, and the effects of old age and death in remarkable prose. It sounds pretty good. It was only 25 cents. And then I found this book, The Age of Anxiety, Fear, Hope, Dread, and the Search for Peace of Mind by Scott Sisko, Siso. Uh, since I uh, suffer from anxiety and dread, 
and also it was recommended by this guy who wrote The Noonday Demon, which I have over here in my library. Uh, I have it, let me see. I show it to you. Yeah, I'm back. The Noonday Demon, an Atlas of Depression. I bought this book, uh, The Noonday Demon, an Atlas of Depression by Andrew Solomon, oh, several years ago, and it was really a great book. So he recommended this book, The Age of Anxiety, and so I got that book. But I really recommend, if you suffer from depression, this is really a great book, The Noonday Demon. So I got the book on anxiety, and I found here Portrait in a Brownstone, a novel by Louis Akatras. Uh, I collect him. He was a uh, New York writer, but he also practiced law in New York. Uh, this book was printed in 63. Look how good condition it is. Look at that slipcover. It was looks brand new doesn't it it was a book club it was a book club book it was printed in 1963 I was amazed what con good condition it is I haven't looked at the hardback let me see how it looks it looks brand new doesn't it the heart looks in but anyway I collect him Louis class I have about seven or eight of his novels. Uh, he was a New York City writer. He writes about the upper class. Uh, really great writer. Uh, and I found this book, The, the Good of an Affluence, Seeking God in a Culture of Wealth by John R. Schneider. Uh, I realized when I bought this, I looked in my library, I already had a copy of it, so I'll give it away. And I found this novel called uh, Night Film by Marsha Pel Pels. It looks really kind of like a postmodern thing. You know, it has all this s stuff inside. It's a murder mystery about on a damp October night, beautiful young Ashley Corvana is found dead in an abandoned warehouse in lower Manhattan. Though her death is ruled a suicide, veteran investigative journalist Scott McGath expects otherwise as he probes the strange circumstances surrounding Ashley's life and death. McGath comes face to face with the legend, the legacy of her father, the legendary reclusive cult horror film director Sansilus Covola, a man who hasn't been seen in public for more than 30 years. So, I don't know, it was only 60 cents. And uh, it looked kind of interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I got this night film. And I got this book by the poet. It's like by Donald Hall. He writes about, it's called Their Ancient Glittering Eyes Remembering Poets. And more poets, T.S. Eliot, Robert Frost, Milan Morlanda, Moore, Dylan Thomas, Ezra Pound. He writes about remembering these poets. This is an earlier edition. This is a later one. This has more material than this one by him, Remembering Poets. First I thought it was the same book, but you notice this one's thinner, and then the newest one is thicker. There's more material in this one. And then I found this book on Pocahontas, the life and legend of Pocahontas. You always remember when we were in, I grew up in Virginia. Well, I went to school in Virginia when I was a boy. So we always talked about Jamestown and Captain Smith and Pocahontas. So this is a, it's a nonfiction book. Uh, so yeah, this is on Pocahontas. I'm a student of American history and colonial history and that's why I got it. And then I found this book of short stories by John Updike. I was very surprised. I have, I don't know, at least 25 books by John Updike, but I didn't have this, uh, his, this 
short story collection, My Father's Tears and Other Stories by John Updike. So I was glad to find that. And I found this book by Philip Carr called The Grid. I collect Philip Carr. I have a whole stack of Philip Carr. Down here, this is Philip Carr, Berlin Noir. Philip Carr, the philosophical investigation by him. Uh, Philip Carr, the field gray. Philip Carr, the dead rise not. Uh, Esau, a thriller by Philip K. And then I have Philip Kerr, the one from the other. So yeah, I, I collect him, Philip Kerr. So yeah, I got, put him in the stack. Put the grid, Philip Kerr, in the stack. So yeah, he writes, he writes kind of thrillers kind of thing. I just got into collecting them. So that's what I got. Oh yeah, I also got this book. Uh, Oxford History of Art. This is on the modern art, 1851 to 1929 by R Richard R. Brittrell. Uh I collect books on modern art and only cost me a dollar for this one. And then I got this book. This book cost me three dollars from the book nook. Rome, 1300, The Path of a Pilgrimage by Herbert L. Chrysler and Johanna Zacharias. It's really what it is. It's, uh, it says here, following seven centuries of tradition, Pope John II has declared 2000, the year 2000, a jubilee year. This remarkable book takes us back to the first holy year, 1300, when Pope Boniface VIII promised eternal peace for the souls of all Christians who trekked to their eternal city. 200,000 pilgrims flocked to Rome in that year, viewing the sacred Christian sites that figured so prominently in their religious lives. This book takes us on the route of an imagined pilgrim of the first jubilee which was 1300, guiding us through the medieval city as she saw it and allowing us to experience its treasures and rituals. So it has all these, it's a, uh, it's also a very nice book. It's put out by Yale University Press and uh, I collect books on, on the medieval philosophy and medieval spirituality. So I got that. So, uh, what else I got? Oh, I got Clive Barker. I don't really collect uh, fantasy horror books, but one of my booktube friends mentioned Clive Barker, and I got these for four dollars. I got Clive Barker, The Book of Blood, volumes one through three, and then I got his series. I think Clive Barker. This is the. This is book one, Clive Barker. It's called, I can't pronounce it. It's Aberat, Aberat. It begins the most boring place in the world, Chicktown, USA. There lives Candy Quackenbush, her heart bursting for some clue as to what her future might hold. Once the answer comes, it's not one she expects. Welcome to Aberat. A vast archipelago where every island is different hour of the day. And then it goes on. That's the first one. And then you have the book two, Arabat, Days of Magic and Nights of War. And then I got book three, Arabat, Absolute Midnight. I, I, I've been looking at book two, but I noticed that people are really into reading fantasy horror. And so I thought maybe I'd start collecting Clive Barker and maybe someday I'd get into fantasy horror but I don't know but it was really cheap and I'm just kind of curious if I do I'd start with this one this is supposed to be uh, 
a special collector edition with an induction by the author. So I'll start with Books of Blood. If I ever, maybe I'll read it around <laughs> Halloween. So that's what I got. Tomorrow I got a cover for somebody at the Book Nook. Tomorrow's a Wednesday. And I got books set aside there. So we'll see what I get. So next time, bye.